When you go to your garden center, you'll probably notice that there's different options as far as sizes of plants, the sizes of the containers. And you have to decide, is it worth the money to select the larger plant? Uh, some people like to have the instant gratification of having instant tomatoes, or in the case of this plant, automatically having a pepper plant. But is that really the best choice? And is it the best use of your money? This four pack of peppers cost the same as this one single plant. And so while this one does have a pepper, he's actually expended so much energy producing that one pepper, whereas these smaller plants will be able to grow a bigger plant in that same amount of time. In the case of the tomatoes, again, Here's a little four pack of tomatoes. They're very nice, compact, small tomatoes. And then here we have a two and a half quart container. This pot actually costs four times as much as this four pack did. But in the end, I will be able to produce four times as many tomatoes in total as I will from this one single plant. So as far as my budget is concerned, it's a much better return on my investment to spend less money by the smaller plants. When we're looking at transplants, say if we're all looking at uh, four packs, there's a few tips that you want to keep in mind as you're selecting those plants. First of all, you want to look for a really nice dark green color. Look for a plant that's uh, sturdy, appears to have been well grown, uh, nice and tight and compact like these uh, tomatoes are here. I have another pack of tomatoes and you'll notice these are really long and lanky and very spindly. These tend to whip around a lot in the wind. There's a lot of space in the inner node. That shows that they really grew quickly, maybe under lower light, didn't have as good a nutrition. So I'm willing to bet that these small tomatoes that are more compact are going to produce a bigger, bushier, healthier plant for me than those that are actually taller but more lanky. When you get home with your transplants and you're ready to uh, transplant them out, you want to make sure that you uh, give them a little bit of protection in the first few days. You may actually take some lath or some shingles or something that you can put on, on all four sides of the plant to give it a little protection from the wind, a little bit of protection from the sun. And we also want to make sure that we water them in well. Water them in with a weak fertilizer solution, just a little starter solution. Kind of give them a little uh, boost to get them up and going. Oftentimes you might actually want to pinch out some of the flower buds that are in a transplant uh, so that they spend all of their energy into making a, a bigger, bushier plant, a more solid plant. That's especially the case in a lot of flowering plants. So we want to uh, remove those if at all possible. If your plants were grown in a peat pot or a paper pot, sometimes uh, you'll be able to directly plant with that container into the ground. The thing that you have to make sure that you, you completely tear off that upper edge, especially in the case of a peat pot, and make sure that there is not a, a paper pot or a peat pot edge that's exposed above the soil line, because that'll actually act as a wick and it'll draw the moisture up out of the soil and away from the plant. So as you go to your garden center or nursery and select your transplants for your garden, try to remember, look for a nice, healthy plant and that a smaller plant may actually be a better investment than the larger plant. For more information, visit your local extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.